How old are you? 18. Good job, you're going to jail. Can you please grab my phone and my license for me? You're now going to jail. Do you understand? This police officer just violently arrested an 18-year-old high school student after pulling her over for allegedly speeding, and now he's explaining to his responding backup exactly what he just did. Pull over for headlight speed. Okay. Cracks her window. Ask her to roll it down the rest of the way. Cracks it another half inch. Ask her to exit. She refuses to exit until I tell her why. Tell her about four or five times, exit the vehicle. You don't want to go down this route. Refuse to exit. So, pulled her ass out, put her in arm bar, slammed her to the ground, got her in custody. How old is she? She says she's 18. Okay. So she's going to go to jail. Of course, my body cam didn't turn on when I told it to. Of course, his body cam didn't turn on until after he took down and violently armbarred an 18-year-old high school girl. But lucky for us, this gas station's cameras were working, as well as the officer's dash cam. And you need to see this footage, because if this one does not make you mad, then you are part of the problem. Let's go through it. This is one of those situations I talk about where it's not always a bright line. What can a police officer do? What can a police officer not do? A lot of constitutional law is an analysis of reasonableness under the totality of the circumstances. So this happened in South Whitley, Indiana. The South Whitley Police Department, Officer Brian Schimmel, he only began working there in October of 2023. And he pulls over this high school senior Vivian Augustus, who was 18 at the time, on January 24th of 2024, Vivian's parents say that she was driving home from school and was pulling into the South Whitley Marathon gas station on South State Street. They say that she was nervous because this was the first time that she had ever been pulled over. South Whitley officer Brian Schimmel says that he pulled her over because she had a headlight out and was speeding. He comes up and asks her to roll down the window, which he does very quickly, her father said. So she's looking for her driver's license and registration, and she says she asked him why she was being pulled over and that she was told that didn't matter, and she needed to get out of the car. She was still trying to find her driver's license and registration. He opened up the vehicle, told her to get out of the car while she's still trying to find it. She keeps it in her lanyard with her student ID. She said as soon as he opened the door, she was just scared, her mother said. I could just imagine she probably wasn't super efficient in finding what she was looking for. Surveillance video from the gas station and Officer Schimmel's dash cam video shows him pulling her violently from the car onto the pavement. have to be like this. Notice there's a wedding ring on Officer Schimmel's left hand. Somebody might want to check on his wife to make sure that she's all right. All right, get up. Roll over on your butt. I have a knee injury. Please help me up. Which knee's hurt? No, I have a knee injury. Okay, ready? We're gonna count three. One, two, three, up. How old are you? 18. Good job, you're going to jail. Refusing to identify. He tells her he's arresting her for refusal to identify, but you'll see here just in a couple of seconds, her ID is actually on the asphalt, where when he violently pulled her out of the car and took her to the asphalt, the ID was clearly in her hands or somewhere readily accessible, probably attempting to give it to him, and now it's on the ground. Also, take a look at the side of this police car. In the words police, they're black letters with a blue line right through the middle. And that should tell you everything you need to know about why this guy's acting the way he is. Because thin blue line, what does that mean? It means us versus them. It means we protect our own first, rather than protect and serve 18-year-old high school students, for instance. Can you please grab my things for me? Your what? Can you please grab my phone and my license for me? Yep. Take a seat. And my keys. Take a seat.
All right, Vivian. Are you injured in any way? Would you like the medics to check you out? Okay. I'm going to read you your Miranda rights, okay? I have to read these to you since you're in custody, all right? This is your Miranda warning. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and have them with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you before any questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand your rights? Okay. I'm not going to ask you any questions right now. What I am going to tell you is you were pulled over for your speed and your headlight, okay? Your speed was 37 and 30, not that big of a deal, and your headlight was out on your driver's side. I was pulling you over to let you know. If you would have just given me your license and your registration like I asked you to do, you would have gone away with a warning tonight, okay? But however, since you decided <coughs> to pull this right here where you don't want to comply, you don't want to give me your ID, and you think you're going to run the scene, you're now going to jail. Do you understand? You were not. How many times did I ask you? You were not. I've got a body cam on. It'll show you not pulling your ID out. When I ask you to step out of the vehicle, you step out of the vehicle. You don't get to sit there and tell me how I'm going to do my job. Do you understand? See what I mean? This tough guy getting angry, slamming the door in the way he's talking to a little girl, telling her that he had his body cam on when he knew very well that his body cam was not recording during their conversation. As he tells this other police officer who arrives as backup for this dangerous high school girl. What you got? Pull over for headlight speed. Okay. Cracks her window. Mm -hmm. Ask her to roll it down the rest of the way. Cracks it another half inch. Ask her to exit. She refuses to exit until I tell her why. Tell her about four or five times exit the vehicle. You don't want to go down this route. Refuse to exit. So. Pulled her ass out, put her in arm bar, slammed her to the ground, got her in custody. How old is she? She says she's 18. Okay. So she's going to go to jail. Um, <clears throat> of course, my body cam didn't turn on when I told it to. You're going to have to back out, man. There's no room over there. Damn okay, well, the problem here, sir, is that she pulled in here. I didn't pull her in here, so get off my scene. Get off my scene. Yet again, we have a demonstration here on the body cam that was recorded that this guy has a temper. Of course, he did not have a temper when his body cam was not running. That was all the little girl's um, doing. She's clearly a criminal. Everybody needs to bow down and respect his authority and just get out of his way because he is the government. He is the thin blue line. I mean, it's right there on his police car. Good family. You know about him? What? Ballot return signal 80. Yep. This got 655. She's going to be in custody. Failure to identify and resisting. Um, he sort of hooked my way. Next off rotation. We're at their son is at the school and we do it all the time. And at their. Yeah. So was your dash cam going? Yeah. Okay. That's all we yeah, dash cam was going, but body cam didn't go on until she was already on the ground. We've also got the gas station footage too. Okay. Yeah, just make sure you're articulate because I can tell you right now the way the family is. Hmm. I can tell you right now the way the family is, make sure. Yeah. Well, I mean. Oh, no, you're good, you're good. I'm she didn't good. identify, no. and oh, then no, she no, resisted. No. no, I'm just talking. I mean, it's cut and dry. She's there, she's from here, so make sure. Uh, you have everything in there. I'm just giving you. In case you didn't catch that, and I didn't catch everything that this other officer was saying, but the other officer who responds to the scene appears to be a school resource officer. And he's telling Officer Schimmel that he knows who this high school student is, and he knows her family, and that he needs to be careful in how he acts from this point forward. He needs to document 
basically CYA, be careful on, on how he writes things up. And then Officer Schimmel says, well, it's pretty straightforward. I've never been to Indiana, true story. Though when I was in college, our first football game was against Purdue when they had a new quarterback. And I remember the coaches saying, do not make fun of the fuzzy birthmark on this guy's face. And that guy was Drew Brees. Anyways, I do know how to research Indiana law, so I looked up these particular statutes. One, refusal to identify self, and that's Indiana Code Section 3428-5-3.5. A person who knowingly or intentionally refuses to provide either the person's name, address, and date of birth, or to driver's license, if in the person's possession, to a law enforcement officer who has stopped the person for an infraction or ordinance violation commits a Class C misdemeanor. The case law on this basically says it, it just has to be done promptly. So before you get arrested for it, essentially. What about resisting? Resisting an officer, resisting arrest. And this is basically what would be quote unquote obstruction in other states. And this is usually what they try to get people with, you know, for not getting out of the car fast enough or not rolling down the window enough or whatever. It's their miscellaneous catch-all provision. I actually like this in Indiana law. Let's look at this statute, and that's probably why when her father sent me the criminal case paperwork, they, and they did not end up even charging her with this, and actually it says do not use this charge. Why? Well, let's look at, at the charge. Indiana Code Title 35, Article 44.1, a person who knowingly or intentionally forcibly resists, or obstructs, or interferes with a law enforcement officer or a person assisting the officer while the officer is lawfully engaged in the execution of the officer's duties. I actually like this law much better than what we have in West Virginia or most states with their obstruction statute. It says a person has to knowingly or intentionally forcibly resist, obstruct, or interfere. So therefore we have to look to the appellate courts to define what, what does forcible mean. Here's how the courts recently defined it in Indiana. A person resists law enforcement when he uses strong, powerful, or violent means, I like that phrase, to impede an officer from executing his duties. And that is from Walker versus State. An extreme level of force is not required. The force element may be satisfied by even a modest exertion of strength, power, or violence, such as the stiffening of one arms when being handcuffed. In addition, actual physical contact is not required, a threatening gesture in the officer's direction can be enough. That's probably a definition that gets used over and over again. It covers most situations. Does not appear to cover somebody just not getting out of the car fast enough or not getting out of the car at all. It requires a strong, powerful, or violent means to impede an officer. Was there a modest exertion of strength, power, or violence here? No, not at all. And although there does not have to be any actual physical contact, there still would have to be a threatening gesture in the officer's direction. Was there a threatening gesture here? No. He just said that she refused to get out of the car, so he forcibly took her out of the car. Okay, so back to the video. After the school resource officer finishes warning Officer Schimmel, this family is going to cause you problems. They're very difficult, he's implying. Make sure to dot your I's, cross your T's. Um, her father, Vivian's father, shows up at the scene. And does this guy seem difficult to you? He actually seems completely reasonable and cool-headed with the cops. I mean, even, like, too much. How's it going? My car. Oh, yeah. Your daughter? Yep. Yeah. So I'll tell you, because I'm she the one that pulled over. So I yeah. pulled her over for speed, 37 and a 30 and then the headlight, okay, her driver's side headlight's out. Oh, okay. okay. Pull her over, she pulls in here, uh, cracks the window. Oh, they're talking to me. I got it, I got it. Okay. Cracks the window, I ask her to roll the window down a little bit more, all the commotion and the rain, I can't hear her. Yeah. Refuses to do that. Ask her to step out of the vehicle, she refuses to step out. Ask her probably four or five, six times to exit the vehicle nicely. Ask her please, refuse to do it. Uh, want to give me her ID, want to give me a registration. So she's assisted out of the vehicle place into custody, resisting arrest and failure to identify. Okay. Okay. That's, I mean, um, honestly, 
I know she's 18. That's probably my bad because I've instructed her that you roll the window down like that much. Absolutely. You don't have to roll yeah, it down yeah. all the way as long as you can get the ID out. Yeah, the yeah. problem is, is when I can't hear because of traffic yeah. and the rain and everything, we're in a gas no, station. I know. I'm you know, you ask her to exit the vehicle and she refuses yeah. to do so, you know what I mean? Then yeah. they go, we go down this route. Yep. So, um, yeah. I just wanted to let you know, are you dad? Yeah. Okay. And my dad's a retired mm -hmm. state trooper. Okay. So. So. Um, do you have some money? Well, I already called a hook. I wish you would have got here a few minutes earlier. I would have just gave you the car, but there's already a wrecker on the way, so. Oh, I can't just take my car? Let me see if they called him. I got it. He'll do it. I was going to say wrecker or not. Well, they've already been called, but if they haven't, if they're not in the truck yet, I'll get it to you. I don't have an issue with that. Okay. Um, I just have to do a search incident to arrest, make sure there's nothing in there she shouldn't have, and then I'll give it to you. Okay. okay. Yeah, you got fine. your ID, so I can... Yeah, yeah. Look what happens here. Under the guise of making sure this is her father, him being able to drive the car from the scene, rather than it being towed, he asks for his ID. But was it for that purpose? No. You're going to see, just in a few seconds, the real purpose. He is going to run that ID into dispatch to get the criminal history of the father. <clears throat> so what happens next with her? So she's going to go to jail for resisting and failure to identify. She's going to get a ticket for the headlight and the speed. Um, she'll go down to Whitley County Jail. She'll be assigned a bond, and then you can bond her out. Okay. Or whoever. doesn't yeah. matter who, but she'll get a bond. Yeah. Can I talk to her for a sec? Just to keep her chill? Just disregard him. Yeah, you, give me a minute, okay? Sure. This is 655. I've got a 27. It's going to be her father out of Indiana. Last name, Augustus, Adam, Union, George, Union, Sam, Tom, Union, Sam. First name, Brent, Common. Middle. There you are. Let me get the car searched real quick. As long as we're good, well, we'll get you to talk to her first. I'm sure you're, yeah, yeah. you're worried, so. I'm not worried. Well, I want you to. You're a dad, right? Yeah. I'm a dad. I'd be worried, so. She hasn't been patted down yet, no. But we'll get you to talk to her and then get that search, and then we'll just give it to you. You ready? And here you will see yet another constitutional violation in the form of an illegal search of her car. As Indiana case law recognizes, citing Supreme Court precedent, police may validly search an automobile incident to an arrest only if the arrestee is within reaching distance of the passenger compartment at the time of the search, i.e. officer safety, or it is reasonable to believe that the vehicle contains evidence of the offense of the arrest. So here, at the time this officer is searching her car. She's in handcuffs in the back of his police car. Therefore, the only valid um, reason in the absence of a warrant to search the passenger compartment of the automobile that she's not in is if it's reasonable to believe that her vehicle contains evidence of the offense of arrest. What was she arrested for and charged with? Failure to identify herself. At that time, the officer already had her ID and that ironically was not even inside the passenger compartment of the vehicle, but outside on the ground. What possible evidence would it be reasonable to believe that could help establish that charge or help prove that charge that could be inside that vehicle? Nothing. He's on a fishing expedition, and that's illegal under the Fourth Amendment. Watch your elbow. All right. Okay. Can you explain everything to her? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're good on the vehicle. You want to take it? There's no point yeah, in I'll telling it if you're here. So. Oh, you're going to follow us down to the jail? Yeah. Okay. All right. Court documents show the prosecuting attorney approved the deferred prosecution agreement in the case. 
The resisting law enforcement charge was dropped while the refusal to identify and speeding charges remain. Now, reviewing the criminal case documents myself, I don't see where she was ever charged with the resisting law enforcement charge, which clearly does not apply under the statute and Indiana case law. And a deferred prosecution agreement would be appropriate for an 18-year-old who had never been in trouble before. That just means that you go for some period of time, could be six months, could be a year, you abide by whatever the conditions are, you don't get in any trouble, then the charge is dismissed completely, you, you never get convicted, you don't have it on your record. But then her father uploads the video videos to YouTube, and then the police respond. So after the father puts it on YouTube, the police came out with the following statement. The South Whitley Police Department shared on their Facebook page, here's what it said, in response to a social media post of an edited video of a local law enforcement encounter, the South Whitley, and by the way, the only editing that is relevant here is the editing that this officer did himself by not turning on his body cam at the beginning of the encounter. That's the only thing that we're missing. The social media post and comments, and they got completely ratioed on their Facebook page. The comments are savage, deservedly so. The social media post and comments suggest a uniformed local officer acted unreasonably in his interaction with a driver pulled over for speeding on January 24th, 2024. The incident resulted in a criminal charge and judicial finding of probable cause that the driver committed a crime. Ooh, failure to um, not give your ID fast enough, scary. Persons charged with crimes are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. It is a crime to refuse to identify yourself if stopped for a traffic infraction. Further, a law enforcement officer is authorized to arrest an individual who commits a crime in the officer's presence. The reasonableness of the officer's conduct during the arrest is being reviewed. To ensure the fairness of all the parties, of process to all parties, the town's attorney has advised that it is appropriate, inappropriate to comment on the underlying facts of this incident while they're being reviewed. Then... Why did you just do it? You see exactly why the word police on the side of that police car, that town's police car, has a thin blue line in it, like incorporated into it, because that's what they're all about, is protecting police officers, not protecting the public. Of course he acted unreasonably. Did you watch the video? It was an 18-year-old kid, a girl, a little girl, never been pulled over before in her life had committed no crime other than perhaps speeding and having a headlight that is out. And you have this aggressive officer who we see being aggressive to several people who clearly has a temper, who knows what he was saying and how he was saying it to her. She may have been terrified and, and frozen up. Of course he acted unreasonably. What could she possibly have said to justify this bully mistreating, violently physically mistreating a little girl like that. This police department should be ashamed. They deserve the savage comments that they're getting on Facebook, and they deserve more than that. In fact, this officer deserves to be in prison, in my opinion. He deserves to be prosecuted. Did he not commit a violent battery against a little girl? He did. We all saw it on video. And in this media report, which I'll link um, in the pinned comment below, this is what they wrote. They confirmed that Officer Schimmel faced discipline after an arrest while he was working for the Monrovia Police Department back in 2023. Monrovia Police Chief Matt Wright says that Schimmel was suspended for 10 days following an investigation into how Schimmel handled an incident at the town racetrack. After the investigation, the board and department sent Schimmel to a de-escalation training program in Morgan County with another agency. This guy doesn't just need to be sent to a de-escalation training program, he needs to be sent to prison where he can try having a temper with you know, his, his colleagues in prison and we'll see how that works out for him. Like I told you, if you don't have a problem with this one, then you're part of the problem. This girl's father has set up a website and he outlines everything that happened, links uh, the raw footage, and then he also has a petition for you to sign. And I will link that in the pinned comment below so go check that out, and if you want to support her, if you want to help her get justice here, help her father get justice here, sign the petition. You can also help by spreading this footage. Everybody should see 
this guy's temper and how he treats a little girl. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you have a video you want me to review, use the submission link below. Um, also follow me on Twitter, John Bryan ESQ. Remember, our rights do not end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank you.